There probably isn't a more contentious subject in the Five Nights at Freddy's community than FNAF World. Even more so than Security Breach or the books or debating the timeline, something about this FNAF spin-off is just such a big deal for fans that have been around long enough to remember its release. Pretty much every take on this game is a hot take. The general consensus is of course that it's not good, but if you say that, you will definitely get some people arguing with you. Loving it or hating it or anything in between can and likely will be faced with backlash. That's honestly something I love about FNAF World though. It's really fun to discuss because it holds such a unique role in the franchise. It was the most controversial release, it's debated amongst fans, it changed a lot from version 1 to version 2, and it holds quite a few secrets. I just think it makes for a really interesting topic for conversation. I talked about FNAF World in my video where I ranked every FNAF spin-off, but I'll still give a little bit of my opinion before we roll into the main subject. When FNAF World first released, it was an absolute travesty. I'd argue it was about on par with Pop Goes Arcade from 2016. The battles just looked nicer. It was slow and boring and ugly. And get this, I paid money for it. I was excited for the game because the trailer was really good, and I got it on Steam on launch day. I paid real money for the first version of FNAF World. It remains in my Steam library to this day. Please subscribe to give your condolences. But the latest version of FNAF World I actually find pretty fun. It's amazing how much of an upgrade in graphics can do for a shitty game. It's pretty easy, and definitely a bit dumb still, but I can't get myself to dislike it. There's fun, stupid mini-games and comedic moments and a great cast of characters with interesting abilities. The enemies and bosses are also so diverse, and plenty of them are characters that I hold on to despite them never returning. FNAF World isn't one of my favorite FNAF games, and I understand the criticism it receives, and I acknowledge that it's stupid, but it's just a weird fun time that I actually quite enjoy. But I also think that not only could FNAF World have been better, I think it was originally going to be better. I think there were plans for FNAF World that quickly got scrapped, and there is some evidence to support that idea. This is purely a theory, but it's an attempt to make sense of one of the weirdest non-lore related mysteries of this series. Do you remember these two teasers? The first one is the one that disturbed the most people, and a lot of rumors floated around as a result of this image. It's a picture of Mangle hanging, and the stretched out text says, See what you've all done. Even in a series like Five Nights at Freddy's, this is something that stands out as pretty twisted because it's not just one of the characters hanging, it's blaming you for whatever happened. This was released after there were a lot of negative reviews for FNAF World, so there were even rumors at one point that this teaser meant Scott Cawthon started feeling suicidal following the negative reactions of the game. The other weirdly disturbing teaser is of a character called Ball Boy, but because of this teaser I've seen some people in the community call this one Madness Boy. Ball Boy is one of the regular enemies in FNAF World, but in this image he is seemingly broken apart with just the top of his head being visible. The text below him reads, Madness takes many forms. This one isn't as disturbing as the first one because it doesn't have the more sensitive imagery of hanging, and it doesn't literally blame you for the character's demise, but it's still a gritty image with an odd and ominous statement. So what do these mean? Some people still believe this to be Scott responding to the backlash following the release of the game. Some people point out that Mangle is meant to be hanging from the ball of her paddle ball from the trailer, which is definitely possible, but that doesn't really explain it. She's still hanging there even if there isn't a rope around her neck. Her eye is notably fully white and hollow, and the text clearly implies something disturbing. Not to mention that it's fully black and white with a lot of negative space. This is clearly meant to be a gritty, scary image. Also, how do you explain the one with Ball Boy? There isn't really a way to say, no, this isn't what it looks like. It is my personal belief that FNAF World version 2 was originally going to have a dark side to it, and maybe even reveal some hidden lore details. People often accuse Scott of being too clean with his content, especially following the release of Security Breach, but Scott Cawthon is not against showing overly disturbing imagery. Obviously there's stuff like the scarier moments of FNAF 1 and some of the minigames of FNAF 2, but Sister Location literally has a section of a night dedicated to showing you two people hanging. Plus, FNAF World already has the scene with Deskman, which we've seemingly forgotten about. Scott Cawthon is not against some graphic imagery for the sake of horror and edginess. 
FNAF World already has moments where you enter a darker world to access secrets, and there's a great portion of the game that takes place in a glitchy version of the overworld. But also, just think of this. FNAF 1-4 were all very successful, and they were advertised as some of the scariest horror games of the time by a lot of major creators in the gaming scene. Then FNAF World came out, a spin-off with no horror to be seen, and it was received terribly. The negative response wasn't necessarily because it wasn't scary, but the point is that FNAF had a formula and a gimmick and it worked, and then FNAF World simply did not work. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if Scott thought about applying a twisted nostalgia theme to FNAF World to make it connect with the audience that FNAF already had. And let's all think about that for a second. Tell me that wouldn't be the coolest thing ever? Think about Popko's Arcade, which you know I love. It's a fun and creative RPG with some fantastic easter eggs that reveal some pretty disturbing lore. Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator starts off as an arcade-style game before turning scary, and then the game becomes a mix of cute, stupid fun and genuine horror. Even Sister Location has quite a few comedic moments blended in with the regular horror. Or going a little more niche, a great example is the fan game Tyken Sons, where the daytime is a cute game and then at night the scares happen. Imagine a version of FNAF World where the game starts off the same way it is now, but progressively gets more and more scary. Or at least a version of FNAF World where the game has easter eggs with disturbing secrets. Yes, there are already things like that, such as the previously mentioned Deskman scene, but there really isn't that much for your average FNAF or horror fan to enjoy. Looking at these teasers, the Deskman scene, and also how much the game after FNAF World was willing to push the boundaries, I honestly think FNAF World was going to have more dark elements and more scary content. It would have won over a lot more fans after its negative reception, and I think Scott was trying to give the people what they want with these teasers, but after people freaked out, he decided to abandon that idea. This theory does imply that these scrapped ideas for FNAF World's dark side were extremely dark, but again, need I remind you of the hanging in Sister Location? This is not talked about enough. So this was my little theory on the history of FNAF World, as well as some of my opinions. I genuinely would have loved to see a version of FNAF World where the game was a combination of cute RPG gameplay and scary and disturbing imagery, but unfortunately that is not the FNAF World we got. However, once again, referring back to these teasers, I think that was an idea in Scott's mind at one point in time. But once again, I quite enjoy FNAF World after the second update. I'll be the first to admit that it's extremely stupid, but there is absolutely some fun to be had with it. Anyway, that's going to be all for me. Let me know what your thoughts are on all of this in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. I will see you guys next time. Yeah.